Kid, seriously. Hey, boys. Yo. Yeah. I saw a movie over the Christmas holiday season. In fact, I think you saw it, too. It seems like everyone on Twitter also saw it. It's Bird Box with that lady who looks like Michael Jackson's template. Did you see it? (laughs) Wow! What? Wow! They do bear strike. Oh, when they go high, we go low. Wow! (laughs) I my thoughts upon seeing her is like that's a fifty something year old woman who looks amazing. And you I didn't know shots at I'm oh. I'm not saying she doesn't look amazing. I'm saying that <laughs> That's what Michael Jackson Michael, looks like. Yes, Michael Jackson was going for her look. That's fair. Hey, my my your review is time's up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh so this is a movie that is out on Netflix and it is the modern retelling of the M Night Shyamalan classic The Happening where plants make you want to kill yourself and Mark Wahlberg is a science teacher for some reason. But in Bird Box, we start out, Sandra Bullock is uh, a pregnant woman. We kind of jump around between times, but... Um, in- Wait, should we, should we qualify with uh, some spoilers tags here? Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Yeah, we're going to talk about this movie you've probably already seen, but don't worry, <laughs> you won't find our show anyway. We, we jump between a couple different time frames here. We primarily spend it in two time frames. One is Sandra Bullock with two five-year-old children trying to navigate down a river while blindfolded. And then we have Sandra Bullock five years previously where she is pregnant with one baby and her sister. And in that time frame, they are leaving the doctor and they have heard weird reports about mass suicides in Europe. And they think it's kind of a far off threat. And as they're leaving the doctor's office, it breaks out everywhere where people just start kind of randomly killing themselves. It starts with a woman banging her face against the glass in the hospital. It's an all-out panic in the streets. Sandra Bullock's sister is overtaken by it while they are driving, and they crash the car. And then Sandra Bullock is brought into a house with a bunch of other survivors who are trying to figure out what's going on. It's an all-star cast, including John Malkovich, B.D. Wong, Jackie Weaver, Sarah Paulson as the sister, Little Rel from uh, what looks like a terrible Fox comedy, but also a breakout role in Get Out is in there. One of my personal favorites, Tom Hollander, and uh, Machine Gun Kelly, who apparently is some person that kids know these days. But, is he the uh, guy with the tattoos? He is the guy with the tattoos, and I think he's some oh, type okay. of musician in real life, but I, I'm not entirely sure because I am getting close to 40, and uh, that's outside my realm. But they're in this house trying to figure out what happens, And we keep flashing between that and her navigating these children down a river. She doesn't seem, she seems like a very harsh mom. We find out she doesn't even know she wants to be a mom. At the beginning, it was a one night stand or the guy's not around anymore. And she's looking at adoption. And what, uh, what ends up happening here is we find out that there are some type of monsters that we don't really ever get to see. And if you do see them, either two things happen to you. Either you see something and immediately start killing yourself because it's so horrible or uh it's beautiful man well or you become the other people who become it's become so beautiful that you become obsessed with having to show everyone what it is so uh these people are in the house for the most of the story windows covered and you if they go outside they have to blindfold themselves so they don't look at these things and we're trying to figure out why sandra bullock's going down the river we're trying to find out what happened to all the people in the house and we kind of build that way until we we get to a rather schmaltzy happy ending in my opinion but maya you are probably the least likely to want to watch a horror movie or enjoy a horror movie so what did you think about watching bird box well let me tell you grandpa madrid was in town and grandpa madrid loves him some sandra bullock regardless of whether or not you didn't like the joke about the michael jackson at the beginning of this goddamn segment anyways i was not forced into watching it but it was something that he wanted to watch and so i was sort of dragged along worriedly and he i didn't rip the blindfold off and pry your eyes open to he, watch it he didn't saying? he didn't but man i was scared and the, and I, it was a good scared i thought it was a lot of fun it filled me with dread and fear without being gross and while i had to suspend a lot of disbelief for the movie i found like i was able to do it okay it ended better than i thought it could i know luke didn't like the ending but the in the last two thirds of the movie really what i was thinking is like how are they gonna pull this off in any sort of way like i i i was predicting a really really unsatisfying and lame ending and it was better than i thought 
like Luke said, solid cast, and I thought that halfway through that twist where people could see it, and it was, it was basically people who were insane, right? The people who were insane yeah. were the ones yeah. who could see it. Um, I thought that was a really cool twist when I didn't know how much more I could take of just the same old, same old. And so those are the things that I really liked about it. What about you, Mark? Well, first off, I went into this as soon as I figured out, you know, as soon as you realize what the hook is, I immediately got upset that they didn't pay homage to the first and best of the post-apocalyptic movies featuring blindness as a key element, Day of the Triffids. Yeah. So um, I was a little upset that that didn't get... Your brother just mouthed the, the words as you said it. It's Sometimes being on this show is... It's, it's worrisome, but it's also one of those things like, you know, like firefighters and policemen. And like, if no one else will do it, somebody's got to do it. And that's how I feel right now because he was mouthing the words as you were saying them. It was a little creepy, but not as creepy as this movie. Please we had that on VHS. Continue. Yeah. Oh, yes, we did. Um, and it was a dual feature with Killers from Outer Space where they had uh, cut off ping pong balls for the eyes of the aliens. It was it was pretty, pretty intense. Um, so, you know, aside from that and aside from the, the obvious parallels to the fact that, OK, we basically did the same thing with The Quiet Place not that long ago. I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, it wasn't as, as somebody who uh, enjoys the uh, apocalyptic end of the world fiction this didn't present anything that i hadn't really seen uh a bunch of times over as far as the themes of okay survivors are huddled together in a house and one of them is kind of crazy and is the result of everything breaking down um so there was a certain amount of okay been there done that i i liked some of the novelty of the the crazy people being able to see it and opening the other's eyes. I didn't take it as it was so beautiful that they had, they felt they had to share it as they got possessed by these whatevers who were then forcing them to do it because it was their backup plan for people who figured out that they could blindfold themselves. Um, I was just making the comment because that's what they kept saying. Yeah, I, no, I thought what? it was that way too, but it's, it's semantical. They never really tell you 100% what it is, just like they never show you the monsters, but you get to see Tom Hollander's drawings, which you assume are what they look like to him, and who knows if that's what they really look like, or just what he perceives them to look like, um, but I, I like that vagueness, yeah. personally. Yeah, I, I, I also liked that they didn't show the monsters. I, I did see online that there were actually um, sketches and, and test runs of makeup done for them, and I, I agree that a really good part of the element uh, of the horror here is not seeing them. I mean, I think that that's always kind of a standard of horror movies, but especially when you're factoring in a movie about blindness, um, it's really good to not be showing the monsters. So I, I thought that worked well. Um, I didn't like split time thing. Um, I understand why they had to do it in order to cover for that five year jump, but seeing her with the two kids right away sucked all of the drama out of the pregnancies because it was pretty clear. Okay. She's going to have, you know, they're both going to have the kids and those two kids are going to survive. And so it, it reduced the drama of being in the house because you know, those three are getting out at a minimum, but at the same time, I understand you can't really navigate that five-year jump. Otherwise, you know, overall, uh, a, for me, it was an enjoyable way to spend a couple hours. I don't know that I'll ever watch it again. I don't think it, it's the revolutionary film that, that people say. I don't know, Luke, what, what about you? I think you are probably got some similar stuff, but we'll give you your chance. I think that it's 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 entertaining enough, but it's to me it was a real failure of writing that was elevated by a superior cast. And that's what made it interesting was the performances. Sandra Bullock is great. I forgot to mention Trevante Rhodes, who was really good in this as well as, as her love interest. Uh, and again, I'll go on and on, but I, I just love Tom Hollander. Like, I think he's fantastic and he was great in that role, but th they teased us with stories that were far more interesting than the story they gave us. They skipped a major chunk of this movie in the time lapse and because to me, what this story is meant to be and what A Quiet Place does in a much better way is to make this about a movie about parenthood and a movie about family. And like A Quiet Place at its essence is about the lengths you would go to to protect your your family. And I think this what this movie kind of thought it was, but it, it fast forwarded through that part. Right. Because the the big conclusion you want at the end, the big 
dramatic moment is Sandra Bullock, they finally get to the school of the blind and they're safe and there's other people. And she's been referring to these kids as girl and boy. She hasn't named them. And they get there and they finally get to play for the first time and not live around with all this fear. And she gives them names and all these other things. And it's, it's her really becoming a parent. But we didn't spend any time with Sandra Bullock as their actual parent. We spent time with them pregnant, and then we spent time navigating through the river. And what I wanted to see was how she treated them as they were growing up. I think you make an excellent point, because the only time we really got to do that was when her and her partner uh, were going through it. It was like a 10-minute thing when he was sort of you know, being a dad and doing dad stuff. And I would have liked to see more of that, too. Exactly, because that's, that's the relationship we want to see is how she relates to those children and what she's willing to do for them. And I think if they would have focused on that, we would have got more drama in what she was doing on the river. Because they wanted us to have tension at the one point where you thought she was going to make the little girl, who isn't her daughter, um, you thought they were going to make her look to navigate the other two to safety, and Sandra Bullock makes the decision not to, which isn't surprising. But if you would have built her more up as the bad mother, I think they, or the cold mother that I think they wanted us to see, then that would have been a much more interesting film. Instead, we spent way too much time just with people in a house. And beyond the major people I hit on, not that many interesting people in that house. I had a huge problem with that house. To talk about some things that I didn't like about the movie, the acting when you first get into the house was really, really rough. And moreover, I was immediately taken out of the movie because we're led to believe that this is just hitting the United States like right now when she goes into the doctor's office. And by the time you get to that house, you get the feeling they've been there a while. And they do that, that quick reveal of exposition like, oh, we can't do this, we can't do this. And it just really took me out because there's no way, you know, I was like, what is John Malkovich have like an Xavier Institute? Like, what the hell is this? And it really didn't, you know, follow the rest of the story. And, and, you know, I was happy that the acting picked up a little bit later. But when, when I watched it, man, I did not agree. But the, the cast was good, but I felt it fell apart at that at that for a while, I should say. That's that's an interesting critique, because that also goes towards exactly a uh, similar problem in the grandfather of all apocalypse movies, Night of the Living Dead, where you have um, Ben and Barbara who, you know, suddenly get caught up in this and they make their way into the house and they board it up only to find the people in the basement had already been there for a while. So apparently it had been going on for a long time in order for them to get there and set it up, but not for them. And maybe that's too deep a dive for the, the three people listening to this, but um, interesting parallel. I, I do, yeah. I mean, it, it did feel a little forced because they're trying to move the plot along. I, and as Maya mentioned when he started out talking about it, it's a movie where you have to forgive a lot because this is a world where everyone would actually immediately die. Like, none of these yeah. people would have survived. This world would be way too impossible to navigate. So you have to suspend your disbelief. And I, I guess what you could say if you want to make excuses, because we don't know, is that... Maybe in the hospital it wasn't happening and there could have been panic outside for a few hours because the TVs were out, which got the people in there. But it isn't. I was surprised when she gets to the house. I get that the neighbors, Malkovich is a neighbor. It's actually B.D. Wong's house. But like there's like seven other random people that just happen to be there. And all of them fill a very stereotypical role. Like little Ren's a, a biblical exposition dump right of of what's happening because he thinks they're demons and all these things you know john malkovich is the curmudgeon -y, you know i'm gonna go against everything the group wants to do even though much much like the people coming out of the basement in night of the living dead he was right they should have just stayed at that supermarket and not gone back they should have just yeah. brought everyone over just like they should have stayed in the basement in night of the living dead um you know the machine gun kelly and his and the cop he ends up hooking up with you, you didn't learn enough about them to care. And I was, what actually bothered me the most out of all the people was them stealing the car and leaving. Cause there is at like machine gun. Kelly's afraid to leave. Like he yeah. won't go with them. He's terrified to leave. And the cop is nothing but like perfectly moralistic the entire time and trying to do the right thing. And then they bang once and like steal a car to do what, like, where are they going? Like what's their, their plan? So there are a lot of things like that, but I don't think, 
it, that brought me down as much because they didn't matter. Like San, Sandra Bullock and uh, Trevante Rhodes, you knew immediately were the ones that mattered and who you kind of attached to and and were following. So I, you know, I think I think it, I think if I rewatched it, I would probably enjoy it more because I know now what it is. But I think there was just a lot of failed potential there. I also think too that one of the things that my biggest complaint about the movie, though, um, it gets back to. Um, Sandra's bullet relationship with the kids because you spend five years and okay, we've, we've skipped that five year gap, but then you see, you know, Tronti Williams interacting with those kids. And I don't believe he would have let her not name those kids for five years. Yeah. Right. And so there was a certain, she's a really, really cold mom. She's not even going to name them. Yeah. But okay, fine. If she were a single mom, then yeah, I could see that. But clearly, she's warm to him. He's warm to the kids. I didn't buy yep, that they yep. wouldn't have names, that she would be so cold. And so that, that undercut, for me, her motivations um, as they're trying to, to, like Luke said, build her up as the cold mom who you don't know if she's going to, to warm up to. And um, I think we can all agree, too, that seeing the OBGYN at the end was such a groaning moment. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. Uh, some... Some executive producer up on the 40th floor figured that one out. Well, and and my problem, I, I ripped on the ending being schmaltzy or whatever, and the OBGYN is a big problem because the, the fact that she was able to make it there and is just randomly there fine is ridiculous. I would have been, I'm fine with the concept of them getting to a school for the blind and having it be a safe place, but there was like a thousand people in that school for the blind you know, like it was too perfect in ending, like too perfectly sweet. Like if they would have got there and there were eight or nine people and they're just like, Hey, we're, we're safe. And the reason we are able to be safe is because we have blind people here who are basically immune because they can't ever see the things I would have been in fine with that. But there was so many people and there was so like, everything was exactly how you would want it to be that it, it was hard for me to to buy into that um and and it's too bad because it's a simple fix it's like just tone it down just make Mm -hmm. it not quite so nice (laughs) and it would be a little more believable so whenever we do long reviews like this we always kind of go and and see whether it's thumbs up or pews or or ranking so we'll start with mark here how are you going to rank this one buddy i am going to rank. you know i'm actually just thinking about this and i I feel like for people who are steeped in post-apocalyptic films, this is maybe uh, two to three shrugs of the shoulder. Um, It was entertaining. It was good to find a way to spend some time. Wouldn't wouldn't recommend that you go out of your way for it. However, if you haven't seen A Quiet Place, Night of the Living Dead, Day of the Triffids, you know, any of these movies, I actually would rank it higher then um, because I think it's well executed enough on the fundamental points um, to, to be something. So if you haven't seen these kind of movies, I give it four and a half shoulder shrugs. So for me, the Laura Dern Pew scale is strictly a Star Wars thing. It, it's going to have to stay with that from, from now on. So maybe when more Star Wars stuff comes, we'll bring that back. So I have a different scale when it comes to watching these movies and it's how badly sick and stuck on your couch do you have to be to put this movie on? So what type of virus do you have? You know, so like if if I was going to watch Adam Sandler in The Ridiculous Six, I would need to be, you know, I would need to have, you know, a cancer that as it spread, it shot AIDS into the rest <laughs> of my body to watch The Ridiculous Six. So for, for Bird Box, though, I think if you got a cold and you just don't want to go anywhere... This is a movie that's going to move fast. You're going to have a decent enough time. It's got a great Sandra Bullock performance. It's it's only two hours. It, it didn't seem overly long. So for me, me, minor cold, you're good. As is my custom, I kind of rank it with other things in the genre, other things in the series that I have seen. And so I had to dig real deep here to think about horror movies I've seen, and so I'm going to put this right below Candyman. Candyman was a movie I saw way back in the early 1990s, and one of the final uh, horror movies that I've ever seen, I think. Uh, above Strangers, below Candyman. So, um, like, like hey, To tie it all together, um, once again, Candyman starred Tony Todd, who was also the lead in the 1990 Tom Savini remake of Night of the Living Dead. So, 
you know, we've we've really got, you know, a circle of life thing going here. And Candyman's a good movie. I like Candyman. I fully support it's that good. as a, a, a good, good movie in a non ironic way. Yeah, you know, it's a. I mean, I enjoyed it when I was a kid. But um, yeah, like to echo what everybody said, it's it's a fun time. But it it wasn't a great movie, like everybody's kind of making it out to be.